Okay guys, I'm gonna show you a stage right in the fruit. It's Tuesday, March 29th. It's very windy today and it's gonna be 66 degrees again today. And you can see the apples are starting to wake up. The buds have swollen and there's what we call green tip you can see behind these things green is there and those are the those are the bundles of the buds along with the leaves surrounding the fruit that's in there so this whole time I'll show you the stages of the fruit right now you can see we prune the top half of the tree so it's kind of thinned out up top but then down below you can see it's still real bushy a lot of limbs a lot of stacking in the limbs here and whatnot so because the green's showing that means we get rain here in upstate New York a lot of rain and every time rain goes onto that foliage and causes the buds and leaf to be wet it, it gives us a risk for infection yeah, so what we need to do is when the rain we need to be proactive and put on a fungicide spray so that way when it does rain the fungicide is there to prevent any bacteria from growing on the leaves and the main thing we're battling is apple scab which are black dots pretty ugly looking on the fruit and because we're fresh market that will not pass for our spec and that will be only good for juice and a lot of juicers don't even like to see that as that is so that's the main thing we battle here on the farm is apple scab and it's because of the rain farmers out in Washington State and other various parts of the world they don't have to deal with apple scab as much as we do it's just because we get so much rain and wedding events every time the tree grows in the spring we really have to battle it a lot because as the tree is growing I always do the analogy of my sweatshirt I sent you up here on the dash But basically this is the bud in the winter time, okay? When it starts growing, the green, my fingers are starting to poke out of, out of the bark, which is my sleeve. So as the day goes, the, the tree keeps growing like this. So if we spray at this stage right here, we cover up all this foliage. But the problem is the next day, the tree grows like this. So from my knuckles to my fingertips is covered fungicide but back in here was underneath the bark it, it's vulnerable now for infection so in the spring is the most time we have to spray once the trees fully out and the leaves are fully out we don't have to spray as much so I'll I'll take you along with the process I know spraying is a very touchy subject uh, and all that and that's kind of part of the reason this channel's here i know a lot of people in the grain industry started the channel because of the gmos and things like that well apples are not genetically modified we're just using basic fungicides to protect from apple scab so that's that i'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions on this uh, i'm going to take you firsthand show you what we do show you the amount we apply it's literally one pound per acre to three pounds per acre of the fungicide which is a powder that we use for this spray so we're gonna go back we're gonna hook up some machines because we might be having a roll tomorrow morning so we'll catch up with you when we get back to the shop we're digging sprayers out of the barn and hooking them up Oh, and Bruno says hi, and he wants you to admire his haircut. Bruno, how's your haircut? He says it feels like spring.
part of why my dad developed this narrow wide system, the V, v system I was telling you about with the 13 foot wide row and the 7 foot, is we can run full size tractors like the one you see here down the row and we don't need super narrowed up tractors. But we got to put this tractor on a sprayer so we got to unhook the pinnel hutch, take the bucket off the front, and then hook the sprayer up so we're ready to go in the morning. But first, we need to run down to the nursery and push up a little sawdust before we before we take the bucket off. Uh, Matt's been hauling sawdust for the nursery, uh, moving moving material from where the nursery was last year to where it's going to be this year. So we like to get that done in the winter month because it's one less thing we have to do in the summertime. We'll need it. We won't need it till this fall. Load of nursery trees going out. So these are these are some of our spray rigs. We have the tractor, which is 9960 Kubota, all enclosed cab. Everything's sealed. Actually, when I was down in uh, New Zealand, we didn't spray with cab tractors, which almost everyone in the states now sprays with cab tractors. But there's still parts of the world that don't, and that just kind of tells you. 
um, stuff. Used to back in the 80s when my dad was spraying and stuff. Uh, as a kid, there wasn't tractors with sprayers. But this is our sprayer, 500 gallon tank. What it has in here is a fan, a squirrel cage fan. And that blows wind up through here. This is called a tower sprayer. So the spray comes out of the bottom and off the top. So what that does is it's like painting a car. My dad always explains to everyone uh, we can cover the top and the bottom of the leaves. Now, if I didn't make it clear enough in the first half, what we're applying for is for the foliage, to keep that foliage healthy. Uh, this time of year, the apples aren't even developed. So it'll be about a, about a full month before any any apples even start to show we have to come out to green and then tight cluster stage and then pink and then blossom and then fruit set so we have five stages to cover which will be well into middle of may somewhere around there